Did you know BMW wasn't always about those fancy cars we drool over today? Yep, they kicked off as an underdog in the airplane engine business to a heavyweight in the luxury car arena. But before we get started, welcome to Tales of Titans, the place where business and history come to life. So, let's look into the origin story of BMW. BMW's story starts in 1913, when Carl Rapp founded Rapp Motorware to make aircraft engines, selecting a location near Oberswinfeld because of its proximity to Bayerisch Flugzeugwerk, a key client. Rapp wasn't just making engines for them, but also took on projects like the V12 engines from Ostro Daimler, overseen by Franz Josef Popp, who soon played a crucial part in the company's management. By 1917, with Carl Rapp moving on, the company transitioned into Bayerschlick Motor & Werk, or BMW, marking the start with the BMW aircraft engine. This engine, celebrated for its fuel efficiency and performance at high altitudes, quickly became a hit with the German military, prompting BMW's rapid expansion. The success led to the need for a larger factory and the transition to a publicly traded company as the government pulled back on direct financial support. This era also saw the creation of the iconic BMW logo, inspired by the previous wrap emblem but incorporating the Bavarian flags blue and white, initially symbolizing the company's roots rather than a spinning propeller. That is why BMW considers the founding date of Bayerisch Flugzeugwerk on March 7, 1916 as its own start, cementing the legacy of these combined forces in shaping the BMW we know today. After World War I ended in 1918, BMW had to stop making aircraft engines because of the Treaty of Versailles. Around that time, the company changed from BMW GmbH to BMW AG, and was officially registered on August 13, 1918, keeping its workforce and orders. The ownership was then split between Vietnamese financier Camillo Castagnoli, industrious Fritz Neumeyer, and two banks, each owning parts of the company. To stay afloat, BMW shifted to making farm equipment, household items, and railway brakes, even using their industrial engines in creating the first BMW motorcycles, like the 1920 Helios. However, that wasn't enough, so BMW started making parts for Studerschlick Brensen AG, now known as Knorr Brents, as a subcontractor. In a significant move on May 20th, 1922, Castiglione bought back the rights to the BMW name for 75 million Reichsmarks and also invested in Bayerisch Flugzeugwerk, which he renamed to Bayerisch Motor and Werk AG. He reopened a closed factory to produce engines for various vehicles under the BMW brand, establishing a location that would become BMW's headquarters for years to come. Then, in 1928, BMW kicked off its car production journey by acquiring the automobile work Eichnach, which was making the Dixie 315 a clone of the Austin 7. This model soon became the first car to wear the BMW badge. However, an attempt to innovate with a new front axle design in 1930 didn't go as planned, leading to prototype accidents. By 1932, BMW had put its own stamp on design with the 320, its first car not based on another's blueprints and powered by a BMW-designed four-cylinder engine. A year later in 1933, BMW introduced its first straight-six engine in the BMW 303, marking the debut of the iconic kidney grille. The 303 would lay the groundwork for several other models, including the sporty 315-1 and 319-1 Roadsters. The 303's legacy expanded with the launch of the BMW 326 in 1936, a luxury sedan that introduced a more robust frame and four-door convenience. This era also saw the birth of the BMW 328 sports car, known for its unique chassis and engine, which dominated motorsports with numerous victories, including over 100 class wins in 1937 alone. But then, World War II began and BMW ramped up its production, diving back into making aircraft engines for the Luftwaffe, thanks to German rearmament in the 1930s. In 1939, it expanded by acquiring Bandenberg Motorwerk, or Bramo, from Siemens and merging it with its own aircraft engine division, 
setting up a new production site at Alec, just outside Munich. This move significantly boosted their output, with BMW manufacturing over 30,000 aero engines and more than 500 jet engines, like the innovative BMW 003 during the war. However, this massive production scale had a dark side. BMW resorted to using forced labor, mainly prisoners from concentration camps such as Dachau, to meet its manufacturing needs. By the war's end, almost half of BMW's 50,000 workers were concentration camp prisoners. BMW also made notable advancements in engine design during this period, with successes like the BMW 132 and BMW 801 air-cooled radial engines and the pioneering BMW 003 axle flow turbojet. Despite these achievements, the company's late war efforts to develop military aircraft for the Luftwaffe, including projects like the Strach Bomber and Strach Jager, never made it into production. During this time, the German military was also on the lookout for all the vehicles they could muster, especially motorcycles, and roped in several German companies for the task. The BMW R75 stood out, especially in the tough conditions of North Africa. Its flat twin engine had cylinders that stuck out, allowing for better cooling. This design kept it from overheating in the scorching desert sun, unlike other models that struggled with the heat. After World War II, BMW faced significant challenges. In East Germany, their factories were seized by the Soviets, who resumed car and motorcycle production under the BMW name, but later under the EMW brand with a revised logo. In contrast, the West German plants, particularly in Munich, were devastated by bombings, leading to a temporary ban on vehicle production by the Allies. During this time, BMW pivoted to manufacturing household items and bicycles. By 1948, while still unable to produce cars, BMW's designs and expertise caught the attention of the Bristol Airplane Company in Britain. They took plans and an engineer back to Britain, leading to the development of the Bristol 400 Coupe, influenced by BMW's designs. Despite these setbacks, BMW was determined to re-enter the automotive market. They debated various strategies, from manufacturing under license to creating a small economy car. Eventually, they decided on producing luxury vehicles, leveraging their pre-war reputation for high-quality premium cars. This led to the development of the BMW 501 luxury sedan. Unveiled in 1951, but delayed in production until late 1952 due to equipment setup issues. In the 1950s, as production resumed in Munich, BMW faced further challenges. The BMW 501 luxury sedan, launched with a hefty price tag and underperforming engine, didn't meet expectations. However, BMW quickly adapted by introducing updated models like the 501A and 501B, and the more powerful 502 with BMW's first V8 engine, which helped double their sales. Recognizing the shift in consumer preferences from motorcycles to small cars, BMW secured a deal to produce the Isetta bubble car. This move proved successful, with over 161,000 Isettas sold, highlighting BMW's ability to adapt to market demands. However, BMW's venture into sports cars with the 507 Roadster and 503 four-seater faced setbacks due to high pricing, leading to limited sales. Then, in the late 1950s, BMW found itself in a tough spot. They were in debt, and their products, like the Isetta, weren't making much profit. Their luxury cars and the 503 and 507 models were too pricey to turn a profit, and the BMW 600 wasn't hitting sales targets. Plus, the motorcycle market had tanked, as Germans started preferring cars over bikes. By 1959, things looked bleak, and there was talk of merging with Daimler-Benz. But BMW's dealers and shareholders weren't having it. They rallied around a different plan proposed by Dr. Frederick Mathern, and with the support of the Quant family, who had recently become major shareholders, they managed to avoid the merger. Around this time, BMW launched the 700 series, a small car that showed promise, and started working on the new Kloss project. This was a turning point. The new class sedans, introduced in 1962, were a hit. The 1960s and 1970s were decades of expansion for BMW, in 1971, the company established BMW Credit to support its growing network of dealerships worldwide, paving the way for the development of the automotive leasing market. 
BMW's ambition didn't stop there. In 1972, it opened its first overseas manufacturing plant in Roslyn, South Africa. Then, in 1972, we also saw the launch of BMW Motorsport, a subsidiary that quickly gained fame for producing powerful and high-quality vehicles. This success led BMW to shift its focus towards manufacturing sports cars accessible to a wider audience, introducing new lineups that emphasized performance and quality. Over the years, BMW has become synonymous with luxury, thanks to its range of sedans and sports cars. The 1990s marked another milestone with the opening of the Research and Innovation Center in Munich, reinforcing BMW's dedication to leading-edge technology and luxury vehicle production. Coming back to the 21st century, BMW has placed a strong emphasis on electric mobility and sustainability with the launch of electric and hybrid models like the BMW i3 and i8. The brand continues to push the boundaries with investments in electric technologies, autonomous driving, and advanced connectivity, maintaining its reputation for the high-performance luxury vehicles we know today. And that's all for today, folks. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more amazing content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.